A quick video on the publish dialog for Stitch Artist Level 3 for publishing BX fonts. So you have your alphabet digitized, branched, and uh, named properly. One of the bits of information that you'll need to know is the height of the letter M. So I usually select my letter M and look at my um, status pane here and it tells me that's about 50 millimeters. I will need that information in the dialog box. When I go to create and choose publish and select my font to publish. The dialog box opens and the first thing that it brings up is the name of your file, which will be the default name of the font in your font list. So if you want it changed from what is listed here, this is where you change it. The default size is the size that shows up when someone chooses the font from the um, font pull down menu. The minimum size should be the smallest size that you tested on that you want to be made available to your customers. The maximum size is set to whatever the largest size you tested to make sure it's going to work. The current height is that M height. So that's where you put in that 50 millimeters. All of these numbers are customizable by you based upon your font that you have selected. The letter spacing um, default is set to 10%. Word spacing, um, 15%. You can adjust these. Each font is different depending if it's uh, cursive or swirly or, or block fonts type style. You'll want to make these adjustments and test your BX before you provide it to your customers. Kerning, uh, we have a pro, um, an option that allows to automatic kerning, which are just the spacing. Uh, nearest point is the nearest connecting point, which would be great for small fonts. And do you want it to be default on, default off, or how do you want your um, font to show up in the list as far as even having it available. If you need any explanation on these, please refer to the Embrilliance platform manual in the Stitch Artist level three section under font publishing. Now, before I create a BX file, I will simply click OK so that the font is available to me in my font list. The other thing that it does is it puts the baselines in. If you look, this font is basically all capital letters. There are no descenders except for the letter Q. So before I publish my BX, I'm going to want to make sure that I move my baseline up to underneath the letter Q. And if you have small letters, you'll want to do the same thing as well, because that is what is going to tell the software where those letters need to show up when they are typed with. So the baselines need to be adjusted. Once I've adjusted all my baselines, I will go back to the create menu, publish fonts. All the information is still there that we had set before. If you need to adjust your spacing because you uh, test out your font and the spacing is not right, go from, you need to do that here. Um, in your copyright dialog box, you need to put in your information as you see fit. All this, um, all the details on this can be found in the manual, but it's pretty self-explanatory whether you have uh, SKU numbers, categories of style of fonts, your copyright, your website, your copyright information, and then do you want someone with Stitch Artist Level 3 to be able to convert your alphabets to objects if they have Stitch Artist 3, and do you want them to be able to republish them? So these are options that you're allowed to choose. Once you click OK, your BX file is being generated. So that means when you close this OK dialog box and click OK, it's going to ask you for the name of the BX not for the name of the font, but what you want this BX file to be called and click save. It's going to replace the one if you already have one on there on your desktop like I do. And if when you go to your desktop or to wherever you have saved it, there is my BX font. This is what you can provide to your customers. Hopefully this helps.